I'm Lindsay Gasolino. Um, I'm a product specialist with Touch Graphics. Um, let's see, so I've been a science enthusiast for as long as I can remember, and growing up, I loved science. I ended up um, going into cognitive neuroscience, so I studied brains for a while, which was really fun. Uh, I got to like learn about how different experiences shape the brains, and we got to like do brain, do people brain scans, and I even got a 3D printed model of my brain, and it was just super, super cool. And then, um, over after a while, um, I realized that I wanted to do something that was more hands-on, that was still cool and interesting and science-y, but still, you know, hands-on, and, and would, um, people that was way more engaging. So, um, I've actually been um, working with Touch Graphics for the last couple of years, and we make all kinds of interesting uh, products for education, and um, uh, uh, lots of hands-on interactive materials. So um, specifically, we do a lot of work with museums, and I love science museums. I, um, what, what's great about them is that they're such interesting places to learn new things and to get engaged and have fun and get, you know, get your hands on like, interesting stuff. Um, so I'm blind, and I grew up going to museums from time to time. And some of them were really fun for the reasons I just mentioned. And other times I had experiences where I would go to a museum and I would walk in and I'd be like, oh cool, this is the museum of glass cases. Like, it's just glass cases. And like, yes, oh, we have a mic. Oh, okay. This is Oh, okay, I'll stick it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. You just pull it out. Um, <laughs> okay, um, all right, so I'm even louder than normal, all right. So yeah, you go to a museum, I've been to a museum, and I'm totally blind by the way, so I'm, I go to a museum and it's like, ooh, glass case, and I, like a different glass case, but just like a little different shaped. And then the people who are like, oh, the glass cases, there's such cool stuff in there, isn't it so cool? And then they read like a super verbose description of like, what's there, and especially like in other types of museums, you get a lot of that. And then there might be like two accessible things, like things you can touch, and everyone's like, oh, it's so cool, like blind people, like you can like touch stuff, and it's like one, two objects, and everyone feels good that they did something accessible, and meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of cool, um, or not, it might just be like an accessible blob that's tactile. So museums are really they're, they're really interesting but at the same time there's still a lot of work to be done and that's why I'm really excited to do the work that we're doing uh, oh by the way uh, feel free to like uh, interrupt any time I uh, cannot see your hand I mean if you want to like put your hand up in the air and do a nice stretch that's great but I won't be able, <laughs> I won't be able to tell um, so just call out your name if you have a question and I'll be happy to answer that so um, we do, we've been working with museums for years. Um, we've been in business since the late 90s. And I wanna just pass around some cool tactile examples of some of the stuff we're doing. So we've collaborated with uh, museums all around the country and um, different types of museums, obviously science museums I'm gonna focus on because this is a science conference, but um, I, I have materials that we've done from other types of museums. Um, there's other stuff that I just wish I had with me, but because it's in a museum, I can't ha have it, so I'll do my best to explain it. And um, so we, we've um, done a lot of um, stuff that not only is accessible for blind people, but the idea is to, to make a, you know, create a really cool hands-on experience for a lot of people. Um, so we, one of the projects we did, and this is actually before I, I joined Touch Graphics, is um, at, over at the Shedd Aquarium in, in Chicago. Um, obviously a, an aquarium is really great, there's all kinds of animals, interesting things to look at. Uh, what we what we did is um, obviously the things you can't touch um, because for various reasons um, um, you don't want to get you know poisoned by a fish. Also, unfortunately, some things are just not designed um, with touch in mind. Um, so we and we designed a talking model of a seahorse. And it's really cool because it is a touch sensitive, it's a model, it's a, a seahorse, 
and you touch different parts of the seahorse and the seahorse is painted with a special paint that senses your touch. So as you touch a different certain part of the seahorse, it will tell you what the body part is. And then if you keep touching it, if you, well, if you go to a different part, it will tell you what it is. And then if you touch the same part multiple times, it will then tell you what it, more about it. So it will give you like cool facts about seahorses. And we do these, a lot of these kinds of models um, where we put sound effects and all kinds of interesting things. So it's a fun experience um, for lots of people. It solves um, the accessibility issue of the um, not being anything to experience and get your hands on. And it's just um, an interesting experience that anybody can have access to. So. Um, let's see. So we did that um, recently. So when I've come on board, there's a lot that we've been doing. So we've been working on this project with the, uh, the National Museum of Health and Medicine in Maryland. And it's interesting because I, well, I studied neuroscience. And meanwhile, at this museum, they were looking to, it's, so it's a really cool museum. They have all this medical, all these different specimens. They actually have like, the, they have the bullet that killed Abraham Lincoln. They have some um, different um, first artificial kidney. They have I, yeah, <laughs> all kinds of things that depending on your point of view, it could be cool or gross or however you think of medical museums um, and specimens in jars and things like that. But one thing that they really wanted to have was a model of the brain that you could touch. So we are making one for them, and it's a giant model of the human brain, and you touch different parts of the brain, and it's also touch responsive. So you touch different areas. It will tell you, you know, this cerebellum, uh, visual cortex, uh, occipital lobe, I should say, frontal lobe, all these different parts of the brain. And then when you touch it, it's going to tell you all about what that part of the brain does. And because this is what the specific museum wanted, um, we're going to talk about things like, have it explain things like what happens um, when there's certain types of brain damage. So how that affects the brain and how we process inflammation. So um, that's a really exciting project. We're going to uh, have that um, in the museum within the next couple of months. So that's really fun. Um, what was, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, one is, is there a specific name to these tactile things that you're talking about? And then the second question to kind of go with that mm -hmm. is I assume they're like three-dimensional things that you touch because I've come across a lot of things in museums where yeah. they're like, it's a flat screen that you touch oh, and it talks. Oh, right. So the, yeah, like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, no, so these are actually, so the, so they don't have a specific name. I mean, depending on if the museum, like the museum will kind of give it a name, like it will, sometimes it, it will be an informal name, like it's probably going to be the brain model, the talking brain model is probably what they're going to call it because, you know, obvious reasons. Um, but it's, um, it is 3D. So it's made, we have a, an expert model maker who designs these and um, gets it 3D printed. And then we use a paint to paint the touch sensitive zones on it. And then um, the, the um, cosmetic paint goes over that. So there's the high tech paint that makes, that makes it so it recognizes your touch. And then when it re recognizes your touch, it sends that signal into um, some touch sensors inside the model. And there's a little Raspberry Pi computer that makes it run. And then, um, and then on top of that, we paint the, the nice pretty paint to make it look like a brain and like, look cool and make people like, oh my god, it's a brain. We're going to go touch it. So um, yeah, that's, that's those models. Um, we're actually right now working on a project. So we're developing, um, so we, we have different ways, and we're always thinking about different ways of using the scent, making it so that we can make these interesting um, touch responsive uh, models. So we're actually working on developing um, tablet. Uh, we, we actually have a lot of these now. So in addition to making models, we make lots of maps. So we make uh, maps that you can put on tablets. And this is something that a lot of museums want because navigation is a, is a major issue. So what we do is we print 
um, 3D, so we use a, what's called a UV printer to print um, a, a tactile map, so it's a raised map. And then it prints the texture, and it also prints the visual. So I'm actually gonna ask um, if we can pass this around. Um, so it's a, let's see. Um, yeah, it can, if someone wouldn't mind being the passer, that would be great. Thank you. So, the, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question, and it's actually something that we're still working out because a lot of deafblind people do want to access this, and obviously there's the issue that some of this is. So the, the good thing is a lot of this stuff does use Braille. It has a lot of Braille um, labels, and the but the of course um, and for people who are deaf and not blind, there's a, um, a lot of these products, we incorporate a visual screen so they can see it. But for deaf blind people, we're figuring out, we're working on figuring out ways of getting that audio information to them um, because right now it's it's spoken. Um, the thing is, it's, it's all written in text beforehand. So uh, one, one way is to, you know, one low tech way would be to, have the script, the, the text um, that is being spoken of, available um, to read, but obviously it would be nice if there was a more integrated way of doing that, you know, something where you can touch it and you'd have immediate access, like through a, um, electronic braille. So, but right now we've, we've um, tried different things. I think we've tried like, uh, this, is, this is actually something that my collaborator, my, my um, boss would know a lot about because he's been doing this a while. Um, but we've used things like, I think it was like RFID, and there were some issues, and I don't remember exactly what they are, but um, it is definitely something that's important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that would be great. And and part of, part of it is figuring out how we want that to interface the braille display to interface yeah. with the tablet because a, a, a lot of the tablets right now are giant Android. Oh well. Okay. So actually, I I, I know I told you guys about the models. Um. So those don't use a tablet. Those are they have, we'd have to. What was that? Standalone, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we'd have to figure out some way of like piping it into the braille display, like having some kind of, you know, figuring out the technology behind that. Um, one of the things that we're doing though is like with, so th this map I'm passing around, it's, um, so it's visual and, and tactile, and it fits over a giant tablet. And it's usually a giant Android tablet because of the, the cheap and also because the size. Um, would fit the, the tactile map. And we install these in a lot of um, museums and in um, different offices. I think, I forget which one I passed around. We have these um, all over the place now in Google, uh, New York City campus and also in other Google campuses. And so these, you touch, you touch the map. So if you imagine this on a touch screen, you would touch different parts of the map and it will tell you what office you're touching. It will say, you know, this is an office, or this is a hallway, or this is a room. And then when you touch it again, it will speak uh, more information about, about that space. So the idea is for it to be visual and tactile and you know, audio and to be interactive. So you can embed as much information as you want. And also some of those maps have models. So, so we're actually designing right now at the Smithsonian, it's a, it's a model of the National Mall. 
So you can go up to it. You go to the main, the castle, which is like the main, one of the um, main Smithsonian buildings. You go in and there's this really cool looking map and you can go up to it and you can touch it and you can feel the shapes of all the buildings, like the cool, and there's some like really interesting shaped buildings too. There's a, um, there's the, the Hirschhorn Museum, which is like a giant donut. And then there's a castle and it has all the turrets and all the towers and all of that, which is like super cool. And then those buildings are actually touch responsive. So you can touch this this map or you, you can touch the buildings which are glued down onto that onto that overlay that um, the, the sheet and then you have like a, a more 3D sort of hand catching experience. Hey Lindsay, this is Chris from Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, one of my questions was so with a map like that it's mm -hmm. as great as it is to have that touch responsiveness if I just want to get a general idea of something is that something that could be implemented where it doesn't you know, talk. You, yeah like right. a mode of exploration and then you want to know more you a button or a triple tap or something. Right. So, so, you know, that's always the interesting thing is like, we want to make these things really simple, but we also want it to be like, we, we, a lot of times, you know, someone goes to a museum, they're going to just like pass by. Some people are going to like spend a lot of time, but a lot of people are just going to want to like start touching it and they're not going to know all the rules of operation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people are kids too. So you don't, it's, just, it's not going to work if you have all these like things that you have to learn. Um, so the way that we've been doing it, because what we find is with a lot of um, people who are tactile readers, um, two-handed exploration mean usually means you know I want to explore, and in this case, if you touch it with one hand with one finger, it will it will talk. But if you touch it with two hands, it's going to shut up. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it is obnoxious if you like don't want to talk, and it's just like blah 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 blah. So whenever we make these things, we always have to sort of titrate, like, okay, is it talking too little? Is it talking too much? And we have a a, a great programmer who we always tell, like, okay, now you gotta tweak it so it, you know, does you know tweak the system. So because with, with the brain, we actually took it to this the brain model, we took it to this assistive tech conference and it was like, it, it just talked way too much. And we knew right away, it was a great testing ground because we had all these people come up to it and they're like, yeah, brain, like let's touch the brain. And they would come up to it and like, and some people it was fine. We actually had Stevie Wonder touch it, which was like really cool. Um, it was really, really neat. Um, and then at the same time, we had people, you know, touch it and it was just like way too talkative. So. It's always an interesting thing, and, and we want to make it, you know, a cool experience and not, like, an obnoxious one. Compassion? Yeah. With that um, cool versus obnoxious experience, yeah, yes. um, when you said it's an Android overlay, does it use that Android talk back? So, right, okay. So we actually have our own sort of interface that we use to, you know, as far as, like, the actual app. Um, since I've joined the team, it's something that we're talking about is, you know, how can we, because there's like other things we want these tablets to be able to do. So I have asked about TalkBack. So it's something I want to learn. First of all, I need to learn how to use TalkBack. So that's that. But this is, this is sort of separate from TalkBack. Um, it does, depending on, what was that? Yeah. Exactly, I know, I know, because everything is different. Some things don't even use the latest OS, and it's just, it's it's a big mess. So you kind of have to, like, pick your tablet carefully and all of that fun. Um, so it's it uses its own overlay. It also uses, um, so, so you can program it so it uses its built-in text-to-speech. So when you touch it, it can talk like a computer, it can talk like a robot, or... It can talk, um, you can program a, an actual human reader, which is in a lot of museums, it tends to be what we want to do. Um, once we've finalized the script, like what we want to say, so we'll have like a nice sounding person, like, you know, tell you about how nice, how great the brain is and like all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. So I was having fantasies then about some kind of um, interactive AI experience where it could say, ask you questions about what you want to know, maybe about a cat over there, or yes, yeah, over there for an hour, like a you know, yeah. guided tour kind of thing. Right. That, like an expert system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the map thing, I, I like, when I go to a map, I want to be like, where is what I'm looking for? And not yeah. Let me touch every single thing. Right. So, so we have kind of a little, we have a system. <laughs> we do have a general system for finding, for indexing. So it's kind of cool. We we you, you so 
some of these maps, so the one I'm handing you, you would swipe on until, so you swipe this part of the map, and it will say the names of places until you get to the one you want. And then as you, you can slide your finger around the map, and it goes, and the, and the, high, <laughs> the higher the pitch, it's, it's kind of a fun game. Right, it's kind of like, sometimes I just have fun doing that, like all, when we work exhibit hall booths and we don't have people at the booth, I'm just like, ooh, let's find places on the map, and I'll just like slide my finger around until it goes ding, ding. Yeah, yeah. So that's, and, and then in, in the newer stuff that we've done, and a lot of them, um, instead of making it so you have to keep swiping until you get to the place that you want, we actually have like an index, um, like a, uh, a big list of, of buttons basically for each place, and you just, and it shows the, the um, little place to tap, and then it shows the label and print and braille, and then you can just tap whatever one you want, and then it will put it in that you know sound mode. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, what's your name, by the way? I don't think I got. Oh, nice. Exactly, and and that again, this is something where we would. Yeah, um, you know, part of that is right now depends on the limitations of the the tablet because you'd you'd want it to vibe. I actually don't know if these have vibrating motors in them, but that's actually something we should do because we you know we have the visual in addition to the sound that is like a visual pin that shows up when you into the place that you're looking for. Um, but that's definitely something we would need to implement um, is either some kind of, um, yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, we, we, we know that, you know, we shoot for universal design, but there's still a lot that, you know, we can keep working on and getting better. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we have been working with a deafblind colleague from time to time, um, who's given us advice. And this is sort of has been before I. This is uh, I know Steve Landau, who runs the company, um, has you know quite a few uh, deafblind colleagues and people he knows from the deafblind community. So um, you know he's he knows them, and I know that they've given us some some feedback, so I'll have to talk to him some more and see how he, you know, we plan to implement some of that. Because it, it's true, like it would be, we, we definitely should. Yeah. So I also want to pass around, um, we're, we're, in addition to making maps on tablets, so actually there's a couple things I want to I wanna show you. So that we're actually also making these tactile guides uh, for when you go into the museum. So uh, if you're this is you know if you're blind and you're going into a museum, um, and say you want to know about some of the exhibits, you might want a, a map. Um, so a lot of we, we've made these for a lot of different museums. The one I'm going to pass around is for the uh, the New York City Transit Museum, and it's uh, it's a really cool museum. If anyone has been there, this isn't specifically a science museum, but we've we're actually doing one also for the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Um, and it's, um, oh, and for the Health and Me National Museum of Health and Medicine, we we're making the brain for. And it's this book, and you pick it up, and it has a tactile map, and it also has tactile images of some of the uh, objects in the museum. So the way it works is you have this book, and it's braille. You also have a, it comes with a talking pen. Um, I'm going to show you what the pen looks like, um, because it makes noise. Um, it might be something to play with after. Uh, we, we talk, but it's um, it's a special lives. Thank you. Um, it's a live. It's called a live scribe pen, and it talks. And the idea is that you tap the pen on the book on different parts of the image, 
um, and it will it will speak. It will tell you what exactly you're touching, and if you keep tapping it, it will give you more information about like why that train car that you're looking at is cool and what it is, and you know what what year it's from and all that. So that's that. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Kind of related to that. So sure. I, um, I've had an experience in the Kennedy Space Center in Florida uh -huh. where exhibits were given numbers and mm -hmm. uh, that were placed on kind of plaques that were kind of in a consistent location. Yeah. And I walked up with a phone and kind of dialed the exhibit's number yep. and it explained. Does this key kind of have that same concept? It, it's a similar concept. So this, so this, there's a couple things going on. So this is the book. So this is like something you could just carry with you, and then the, the pen is like your stylus. So you, you, you tap it, you can plug it into a pair of headphones, it, you can tap it, it will you know, talk to you. Uh, but then another thing we're doing, actually we're also doing this at the Transit Museum, and we're putting in at each, muse at each exhibit, um, we're putting in like a little token, it's a little round disc that looks like the old subway tokens they used to use, and you tap it, and it will, um, with, you tap it with the pen, and it will talk to you about that exhibit. So it's kind of like that, except you don't have to like call, dial any numbers, you don't have to like do any of that, you just use your pen and tap it. How do you decide the location of the token? That's the something, consistency is what you want, yes. you know, the issue of course is that museums are not, they weren't designed with that in mind. So you have these issues of like, oh, where should we put this? And we're actually, I think we've decided on a location um, because, yeah, we, we try and put them in a consistent spot. So I think like something like the top right of each exhibit or um, something where you would know. I mean, of course, then you have to find the exhibit and wayfinding is a, one of those things that is an ongoing sort of issue that we're all trying to figure out. Um, so those are th those are some of the maps, and then also something fun. So in addition to putting maps on these tablets, we're also now working on um, designing we're working on designing um, a tablet um, models that you can lie flat that are installed so that you can um, touch them and the also the touch responsive kind of like the ones I mentioned earlier with the um, like the brain and the penguin and the seahorse. Um, oh yeah, there's also a penguin in addition to the seahorse at the aquarium, which is pretty cool. And the kids love it, and they're just like, the penguin, it's so cute. So this is, a, um, I'm, we're working on this developing, it's a um, saber-toothed tiger, which is technically known as a smilodon. And I'm going to pass this, just be a little bit careful, because it has moving parts. Um, it, it, <laughs> it is a half of a saber-toothed tiger skull, thank you. And we're, we're designing it right now. So right now you're gonna see, it, so it has a super long tooth, which is kind of its cool feature. And the idea is you're gonna touch different parts of it and it's gonna like tell you how it works. <laughs> it also has, um, so right now the paint is sort of incomplete because this is a prototype. And it has a, so right now it's painted with the UV paint, or the, um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking UV printing. This is the touch sensitive paint. So this is like the high-tech paint to show the different zones, like, you know, the tooth is going to respond differently from, like, the top of the, you know, the head. Um, but then we're going to paint it over it with, like, nice cosmetic paint that makes it look more like an actual skull. Um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, oh, we also are working, so another thing is uh, we have bat models. So this is kind of partially inspired by, it's like, so it's inspired in part by me being like loving bats and also us wanting to make more of these tablet touch responsive models. So I actually do um, a citizen science project in my spare time where we walk around the cemetery and we listen for bats and it's super cool. And um, I've always been fascinated by them. And um, we figured, you know, echolocation is sort of an interesting topic. So we built some some vampire bat models. Um, we have one model and then one tactile graphic of a bat. And so when you, you know, the, it's the same idea. It's going to, like, tell you all kinds of cool things about bats when you touch it and it's on the tablet. Um, whenever you get the chance, I can pass that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see. Does someone have the time check, by the way? I'm... It is 3.40. Oh, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna go on a couple more minutes and then if anyone wants to come up and touch stuff and check it out, there's a whole bunch of stuff up here that I haven't even gotten the chance to talk about. Um, so those are the bat models. And then we also do signage. We do a lot of signage because we know that it's important to have um, accessible ways of, of finding things in the museum and also to know what an exhibit is. So I'm holding up right now, it's a, it's a sign for a, a part of an exhibit that we did for uh, the Cooper Hewitt Museum in New York City. And it's a cool design museum and they had this whole exhibit about the different senses. So they had all these things that you could listen to and touch and like sit on and hear like feel sounds coming through your seat. It was like really and one of the things they had, they had us do the signage for the whole um, exhibit and also for this, they had a scent fountain, so they had like these different boxes and they had buttons on them and you would you'd tap the different buttons and like a different smell would waft out and they were like really creative, like one was called like Central Park and like they had all these different smells, I don't know how they decided to name them. It was actually a, a pleasant smell, I don't know. <laughs> um, so we, we have a lot of those, um, and then we do these signs for, um, for other types of things in addition to museums. So we have accessible um, signs that we put on crosswalks above the button that you push, and it will tell you before you cross, the, like, so it has the, um, it's above the little button on the accessible signal, and then you would push the, the button, um, to cross the street, and then you could look at a little tactile graphic of of the sign um, of the of, I'm sorry, a tactile graphic of the intersection of your path of travel. So you can see like how many car lanes and bus lanes and all different kinds of things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they actually have some in different cities in the U.S. too. So the idea is, you know, you'd have that. Um, so s the signs already, you know, that have the arrow and the direction that you travel. We would also have like a little bit more detail, so you could also see, you know, how many lanes of traffic that um, is is you'd be crossing. Um, information like it would show if it's a car or a bus lane. So we want, we figured that it would be, um, it, it's good to have that kind of just extra detail and know what, what to expect. So we've done a lot already with museums and we're really excited to keep uh, working to make them more interesting and fun and there's just, there's so much more left to do. There's way too many do not touch signs out there that we're really excited to sort of work on reducing. Um, and um, yeah, if, if any more questions, if you want to come up and touch things, there's, there's plenty more to, to check out. So thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is a question for Steve. Um, it. Oh, okay, so it depends. So we do a lot of work. So the, the signs, it's a lot of collaborating with state departments of transportation. Um, we, a lot of the museums, it's, it's a thing where they'll pay us to, to do work. So they, you know, want something accessible. Um, in museums now, like the Smithsonian, we're kind of known as like the tactile people. So they like us to do stuff for them. So they, they'll pay us um, and, and we work with them to negotiate all that. Um, we also do, we, we also apply, we get a lot of grants, or, well, the idea is to get a lot of grants, because <laughs> we, we, we always hope for more grants, because they're grants, and it's a fun process, not. Um, so, we, but we've done a lot, what, what makes sort of it fun, you know, what, what we're excited about too, is doing more research on tactile perception, and about what works and doesn't work. So a lot of the stuff that we do, we, we also do a lot of user studies, um, to see kind of like, people's experiences. Also, we do a lot of, 
we do research on tactile perception itself. So one of the things I actually have up here is a, what we call a tactile acuity chart. And what it is, it's, a, it's rows of different shapes. And the idea is you touch these different shapes and you identify them. And with each row, the shapes get smaller and smaller. And we see how small they can get before people, can, people can't detect them anymore. So it's, it's an interesting thing. We really want to know more about how to train people, especially uh, blind students, people who go blind later, um, or anybody on how to train their tactile skills and how to become better. So that's kind of all, another fun thing that we do. Not that I know of. Um, I'm not an expert on tactile perception, but um, the people that do study tactile perception, there's still just so much more about, just on the practical side of you know how can we, and that's what we that's what we want to keep. We we've collaborated with people who do do tactile research, and you know that's something that we want to keep um, learning more about. Um, Yes. And we know that you can improve from being a slow build to being a fast one. A fast one, yep. So, so I think the answer to your question is yes. Yep. As long as you're looking at the part of the body that has the right size. Because there's a part of your body, like you can't learn to rebuild your elbow because you're supposed to be <laughs> No. No, but people do get better. I mean, you know, people, over time, people improve. But we're still, there's still a lot to be done with getting, like, you know, fi figuring out when and how and all of that. Oh, well, so the giant maps, the ones that go in the touch screen, those are mounted. Um, that would be something that would be more in a central place, and it's up to the museum or in the, or the school or whoever is buying one of these maps to, uh, this mic is going out, but to decide how many maps they want and uh, where they want them to be. So we work with them, and we also give them feedback based on what we know. Okay, this is probably a better place to put it actually find it the little the booklets with the pen we usually make multiple they usually want you know several of them and uh, then they can take those around the museum with them any more questions uh, yep we have classes, or you know so I know, I know, and that's something like, believe me, like with this brain model, we had people like, we want one, we want one, and I was like, I know, I know, I want one too, and it's a one-off that we're doing for this museum. I, we have in the past done stuff like we've sold through APH um, for schools. We haven't done that in a while, and I think it was just, you know, it's just kind of the way things sort of worked out, and just the you know, deal, dealing with all of the logistics of that that made it easier for us to you know, start working more with museums. Um, so at this point, we mainly do commercial stuff, but we, um, you know, I personally would love it if we could do more with you know, selling to individuals. We've, we've definitely done stuff with schools, like with, um, well, for some of these maps, you know, to in college campuses, schools for the blind, that kind of thing, where they've been like, we have students, we want to make some maps, can you, can we work with you guys to, to make them? So we, we, we definitely have done that. Anyone else? Is any, by the way, is someone waiting to set up? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll be around. So. Yeah. Oh, one more, one more important detail, contact info. So um, I have business cards. I can, if, if you want one, feel free to come up here. Um, my email, it's ly at touchgraphics.com. Our website is touchgraphics.com, so feel free to be in touch. Uh -huh. Good pun. Yeah. Ha, oh, usually I do that. Usually I'm aware of my puns. It's, lo it's a long day. It's, 
Once I type the word touch graphics and I accidentally put out the D, I'll